Welcome back to Heroes Next Door. We are doing a vehicle tour today. We are at Keystone Valley in Parksburg area. We're going to be taking a look at their 2019 F450 four-wheel drive Type 1 ambulance. Let's go take a look. So as we get started today, I'm going to introduce you to Tommy. He's one of the EMTs here today. He's one of the pay providers that uh, work on this truck. So I'm going to let him kind of take over and talk about you know how he does his job. What's in there? All right. So in the cab of this ambulance, um, it comes basically just standard as a normal pickup truck. And then we modify it to fit our needs from there. So aside from the normal stuff that you'll find um, that you'll just get from the dealership, we have uh, our control panel here, which controls our lights and our sirens. We also have our county radios here um, to speak to Chester County. We also have uh, a radio for Lancaster County. Here we have our MDC or MDT, as some people call it. It's the way for the county to integrate their CAD system into our trucks. So everything that we go to, all the calls that we'll respond to, will come up on this computer. We'll be able to see the address, uh, what kind of call it is, and the notes that go along with it. Is that where your mapping system is also? Yes, so we can have, uh, we, we have a mapping system that's integrated into this. We also can use GPS, but um, so the county can see where we are at all times and we can do our status changes from there as well. So you have two ways to communicate, through the radio and through the MDC? Yeah. Can you talk to fire? Yes. We also have a backup camera here so that we can see easier when we're backing up. And we have, back here we have a bunch of different clipboards, map books, and other um, information for us to use whenever we're responding to an incident. What kind of safety features does this have? Um, it has normal airbags like most uh, vehicle would, but um, we have, especially in the rear compartments, which I can show you, we have um, harnesses and stuff like that for us. We also have vests like this, so that if we're out in the roadway, we can um, wear these to be better protected and more visible. Okay. And you have all your PPE equipment up front, or where is that located? That's all going to be in the back. So we keep our personal PPE up here with us, and then if we need more, we'll just go into the back and get it, like masks and gowns and so forth. What kind of training do you have to have to drive this? In Pennsylvania, you need EVOC, which is Emergency Vehicle Operations, and EMSVO, which is just kind of an extension of EVOC. But, and then to drive uh, an ambulance here at Keystone Valley, you'll need to do their in-house driver training program before you get signed off. Okay. And this is a four-wheel drive truck, right? It is. All right, let's take a look at the back. All right. All right, Tommy, this is a $200,000 plus ambulance, and it was, you know, helped purchase by the Keystone Valley Regional Fire District. Mm -hmm. And you know, this is a piece of equipment that you use every day. Yep. So let's take a tour around it and tell me what's in each compartment. Sure. All right, so this one behind the driver's side is what? So this is the main oxygen cylinder that we'll use to supply oxygen to the outlets that are in the patient compartment of the truck. Um, in here we also have some uh, splinting devices and as well as this oxygen lift that is able to help us lift the oxygen, new oxygen containers into the truck without us having to. Yeah, they, I mean, those oxygen containers are huge, they're heavy. So having a lift is really gonna save your back. You know, I'm on the end of my career, mm -hmm. you're at the beginning of your career. You know, back in the day, we had to lift these and put them in. So, mm -hmm. you know, the fact that somebody's coming up with a lift in order to put those in, you're gonna have a real long career. Yeah, it's very, right. very helpful. So what's on beyond that? So in here, we have just some coolers and some extra trash bags with some cups in them. But in this cooler, we'll use on a fire scene to supply water for the firefighters. In this rear compartment here, we have our stair chair. This device allows us to um, put a patient on this and secure them, and we'll use these tracks to bring them down a set of stairs um, in a way that's safest for them and for us. We also have a water can in here, which is like a normal fire extinguisher, except instead of any kind of fire extinguishing agent other than water, this just has water in it. So if we show up to anything and there's a small fire that we can handle um, to try to prevent further spread of the fire, we'll be able to use that. We also have some basic fire ground tools, a set of irons in here, and uh, some bolt cutters and a glass master. So in case we need to cut a windshield. So a stair chair, that's designed to help you know bring down people, but what are the tracks for? Do you just put them on it and they goes down by themselves or so do you still have to The manage? tracks actually extend out, um, they'll come out a little bit and they'll come out at an angle so the chair is actually upright but the tracks are at an angle so you'll just be able to slide them down the stairs. How many people does it take to do that? Uh, two at a minimum and then if possible we like to have someone backing up the person on the bottom okay. that way 
just in, God forbid, in case there anything were to happen. So you're not carrying them down the stairs. They're literally just rolling down the They're stairs. They're rolling down the stairs with our help. Wow, wow, that's pretty cool. You know, and that's made by Stryker, right? Mm -hmm. So we're gonna make our way around the side of the truck here. You know, we'll cut the back in just a little bit, but you got a couple more outside cabinets. We do. So starting with this rear compartment on the passenger side, this is where we'll keep a lot of our movement devices. Um, we have two backboards in here, so if we have any patient that we think has any sort of spinal injury, we can secure them onto this backboard along with some other things. Um, we can also just use the backboards for moving of a patient too, and then we can take them off once we get into the ambulance. We also have a Reeves litter, which is just basically this type of fabric with some boards in there to um, make it a little bit easier. And we can, it's a very maneuverable device that we can kind of slide under people to move them up out of cramped spaces. Uh, we also have a short board here, which is able to um, pull patients out of areas that are like swimming pools and, and stuff like that if, if need be. And then you also have a Ked and a Scoop, correct? Yes, we do. So the Scoop stretcher is actually um, kind of like a backboard, except it's not totally flat. It's actually curved, and it splits in half. So if we have somebody that's in a space where we don't have room to get a stretcher or a backboard in, we can come in from both sides and kind of literally scoop them up and then put them on the stretcher so for like there. a pelvic injury or hip dislocation. You don't have to roll them from side to side. You're able to use a scoop. Exactly. Wow. Wow. Very cool. What's in the next compartment here? Um, in this compartment, we have our straps for the backboard that I just talked about, as well as um, some C collars, which are collars that go around your neck so we can prohibit the patient from moving their neck in case we think they have a neck injury. Okay, and your straps, you look like you have uh, washable ones and disposable ones. Yeah, we do. So these ones we'll reuse and wash um, if, if they're used, and then these ones will be disposed if, if we use them. Okay, and you also have spider straps somewhere here? Yes, we do, back here. All right, so as we move forward, we're going through the side, how you enter the side, right? Yeah, so this is the door that we'll use to get in the ambulance. And then up front, we have this compartment, which also, once we get inside, we'll show you, also is accessible from inside the patient compartment. Okay. So this compartment holds quite a few different things. We have firefighters at this station as well, obviously, so um, our staff who are fire certified will be able to put their fire gear under here. Okay. This bag is called the MCI bag. It contains, and MCI stands for Mass Casualty Incident. It contains supplies to triage patients. So what we'll do on an, on an incident where we have multiple patients that overwhelms our ability is we'll do what's called triaging, which is to determine who is the most critical and then be able to call for additional resources and determine. So that's got tags, tarps, vests, triage all that tags, kind of stuff. Yep, all that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, very, very good to have. You know, many times you end up on an auto accident, you have, you know, one person or two people, but you can end up with a van yeah. and have five, six, seven mm -hmm. people. And that's van. when it's really important to determine who's most critical. Okay. Above that, you have a Lucas, right? Yeah, a Lucas and an AED. So the AED is an automated external defibrillator. Um, you'll find these in most common public places like malls and so forth, but we also carry them here. Police officers carry them, the fire trucks carry them. They're defibrillators so that if someone's heart is in a rhythm that is able to be corrected by electricity, the AD will analyze that and determine that that's what needs to be done and it will be and That's stopped. licensure. State of Pennsylvania states that every BLS and should have an AED on it. Yep, right? yep. And what's a Lucas? So a Lucas is a godsend, really. It's a... Uh, a device that is basically a CPR machine. So we're able to slide a, a board underneath somebody and then the Lucas kind of comes at like a, it's shaped in kind of like a ring and then we'll put that over them. Um, there's a plunger that comes down over top of their chest and is able to do CPR for us. That way we have an extra set of hands that isn't tied up doing CPR. Right. And it actually does a phenomenal job doing CPR. It does very good. So it that. does 100 beats per minute all the time, right depth, right, yeah. right speed, the whole nine yards. And if the battery, it, it's powered by a battery, and if the battery were to die, we can also plug it into the wall. So I noticed that right above it, you actually have extra batteries. Yeah, we do. We have an extra Lucas battery and an extra battery for our stretcher. So these trucks are designed to basically be self-contained right? Mm -hmm. So you have power, you have air, you have electric, everything that you need is right in these trucks. Yeah. What's the next thing right next to it? This is a portable suction unit and we also have one of these that's integrated into the patient compartment as well but this is something that we can bring into our house. So if somebody has anything in their airway that needs to be removed that is able to be suctioned out such as secretions, blood or anything like that, okay. we'll be able to remove it. Now we just did the outside of this truck. You have a lot of equipment here that is electric and, and that kind of stuff. How often do you check this kind of equipment? We will check it when we each crew comes in for their shift every day. Okay, so it's up and ready to go. You yep. know what's going it's on. It's checked at a minimum of twice a day. All right. 
Let's take a look on the inside. All right. So now we're making our way into the ambulance and uh, you got a lot of equipment in here also, right? Yes, we do. So this is set up as a BLS type ambulance, meaning basic life support. Yep. So you don't have a whole lot of medications and stuff like that. You have some medications, but not a, a whole uh, ALS cabinet kind of full, right? Right. We'll have uh, basic medications like aspirin. We also have oral glucose. Now recently have acquired albuterol okay. um, to treat respiratory patients. And Narcan. Yep, and Narcan. Okay. But anything further than that, we'll, we'll have a paramedic with us to help us out. Okay, but this ambulance is set up to handle pretty much any life-threatening emergency, right? Yeah. So you have all the equipment that's needed to handle anything from delivering babies to resuscitating a cardiac arrest. Yep. Okay. Anytime we'll have a an ALS call or a critical patient, the paramedic will just come in their own vehicle and they'll get in our ambulance and we'll take them from there. Okay, so they bring their own little jump box yep. and monitor that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. All right, so in this ambulance, what, how is it set up here? What's, what's to my right here? So to your right, there is our airway supplies and suction supplies. So we have nasal cannulas, which are those nasal prongs that you'll see. Okay. Um, we have oxygen masks, yeah. and we have what's called a CPAP, which stands for continuous positive airway pressure. Okay. As a BLS service, you're allowed to you don't run CPAP? Yes, we are. So we'll use that in the event that somebody is uh, in, resp in respiratory distress that's so severe that they can't that a normal um, oxygen mask won't be sufficient. Okay. Um, we also have suction supplies. So the suction unit that I told you about in here, yeah. uh, we also have right here. And so we'll be able to hook up tubing to that. And it's kind of like a vacuum that we'll be able to use from there. Okay, so you've got pediatric and adult sizes. Yep. I mean, look how small those little things are. Yeah, we have uh, all the way up from infants and newborns to full-grown adults. Okay, okay. You also have a, uh, what, the VVMs back here? Yep. Bag valve so, masks. In case, in the event that somebody's respirations aren't adequate or they've stopped breathing altogether, we'll be able to use that to supplement their breathing. Okay. It's a nice way to design this right here at the head where the airway is. Right. You got it right here to your to your right. So, uh, what's this compartment? What's this all designed for? So that's the control panel. We have the temperature settings as well as the lights in the back. We can also see. Um, how much oxygen we have left, as well as um, the inverter. So if we want power to the electrical outlets, we'll be able to turn that on from there. Okay, okay. As we make our way around, you mentioned the suction unit that was here. Uh, what's in the lower cabinet in the, in the corner there? Uh, down here we have our PPE, so we'll have infection control stuff like gowns, Tyvek suits, and stuff like that in case we need to isolate ourselves from any. Okay, and this seat is called a CPR seat, right? Yes, so that is where the person would traditionally be there doing CPR. Um, nowadays, like I said, we have the Lucas, so normally that wouldn't be used for that, but it's just a better um, access point for patient care. We also have these harnesses on all of the seats, okay. um, which allow us to be fully strapped in and they extend so that we don't have to take our seatbelt off whenever we want to wow. reach for the patient. Safety is definitely important here. Mm -hmm. Okay, in the back corner cabinets we have so in the back corner cabinets, we have a bunch of different types of bandages, as well as ice packs, um, sterile water. We have large bandages, um, cling wrap. We have different types of splints, as well as um, bandages for if somebody had like a, a chest wound or something like that. Okay. Um, we also have an extra cervical collar in there as well. Okay, so you don't have to necessarily get to the outside cabinet. If all of a sudden, during your assessment change, starts complaining of neck pain, you have access right here in the front. That way we don't have to pull over and get way it to, in the Way to be a forward thinking. I also noticed that that one box says OB kit. Yeah, so that is in the event that we have to deliver a baby, um, that has all the supplies that we'll need in there to do so. So, you know, a lot of our people that are viewing this may not be EMTs or paramedics or even the, in the EMS field. Right. BLS providers can deliver babies? Yes, we can. And actually it's a BLS skill in the state of Pennsylvania. BLS providers are able to deliver babies. A lot of times you'll have it as an ALS call. However, BLS providers can do it. All right, very cool. And above your head? Above my head, we have um, more PPE for us. The same that's in that compartment down there. We have gloves, face shields, um, other isolation equipment okay. to keep us safe. And you have a radio so you can communicate. Yeah, so this is the same radio that's up in the front of the cab. Um, we're able to use this to talk to the county and get all the information that we need to make status changes and whatnot. We can also radio to all the hospitals that we're going to and let them know that we're on the way. Okay. So you don't necessarily, if you don't have cell phone service, you can use an 800 like her radio to get right. a hold of who you need. Exactly. Now, you know, one of the things that we had is, you know, using all the space available. 
I noticed you have latches underneath both seats. Are there stuff stored underneath there? Yes, there is. So under these seats, we have different types of splints that wouldn't necessarily fit in the outside compartments. Okay. Here we have a traction splint, which is a device that we'll be able to use if someone has a femur fracture, we'll be able to pull traction on it to relieve their pain and straighten out the bone in their leg. Okay. I also, underneath that was a uh, girdle of some sort or a, or a sling. Under here we have the pelvic sling. Um, and this is in the event that someone might have a pelvic fracture or some sort of pelvic injury. We'll be able to um, kind of look quite literally sling their, their pelvis and keep it stable uh, enough until we get to the hospital. Okay. We also have um, this uh, emergency blanket, which our foam blanket, we call it an emergency blanket. Uh, we'll use it to drape over the stretcher if we're out in inclement weather. Okay, okay. Uh, you got long boards, short boards, all kinds of things. Yeah, and then behind that we have long boards. They're basically just kind of another form of splinting. They're long, like two by fours and so forth that we'll be able to use to put on somebody's extremity that has a injury. And those are, those are padded board splints, right? Yep. For patient use. And do you leave those at the hospital or do you wash them? Do you reuse them? How does um, that work? If the hospital needs them to stay on for some reason, we'll leave them there, but normally we'll just wash them and put them back in the server. Okay. And underneath this seat is? Under here we have an extra pillow and a urinal in the event that's, uh, that needs to happen. This is for licensure. Yes, So it is. not too often are we going to use the bedpan no, urinal. we don't, we don't that use kind of that stuff. really, but. But uh, state of Pennsylvania requires you to have this on truck. Right. Uh, regardless if you're a transport or, you know, 911 service, yep. you have to have those. Even the pillow, the pillows, even on that licensure as well, okay. which, but we'll provide that anyway, just because it's more comfortable. Okay. And the biggest piece of equipment is? The stretcher, yep. So on the stretcher right now, we have our first in bag. So we keep this on the stretcher because it comes with us into every call, basically. It's an extension of what we have in the patient compartment. Um, it just has all the supplies that we'll use basically on every call. So blood pressure cuffs, a stethoscope. Um, we have pulse oxes, which uh, measures the person's pulse as well as the hemoglobin that's in their blood or the oxygen that's attaching to the hemoglobin in their blood. We also have a spare oxygen cylinder as well as different airway supplies, basically the same that what we had in the airway. Okay, so you have bandages, you have your BVM, you have yeah. everything that goes on. So, you know, I fall down, go boom. Right, you're ready to help. Right here. If you're having chest pains, boom, you're ready to right, right here. You bring it right in. So, but this stretcher is a unique kind of stretcher, right? Because this is, is a this is a power stretcher nowadays. Not everybody gets power stretchers. Yeah, we're very lucky to have them. So, what'll do? What'll happen is uh, we'll pull the patient out. Normally, it'll be either one or two of us on the end of the stretcher holding it up, and then the legs are actually automated, so they'll come down um, and be able to lift. The stretcher can actually lift up to 700 pounds wow. on its own. Um, and it's very maneuverable. We can lift the legs, we can lift the head, we can put these side rails down and back up. So right. it's uh And this ain't cheap either, is it? No, it's not. Yeah, it's, it's a very versatile piece of equipment and it's absolutely necessary for us. Okay. I noticed that even in a BLS truck, you have sharp containers and trash cans and everything like that, even though you're not carrying any sharps, are you? Uh, we do have one, set of sharps you could say we have um, the ability to, to obtain people's blood sugar levels okay and in that we have little um Lancet. lancets that will be able to prick somebody's finger and that'll go in the sharps container but normally that's used for when we have a paramedic with us and they'll start an iv or whatever and they'll put their sharp in so that. you know working with als and bls even though you are a bls unit and that's what how you primary function you guys were able to think outside the box and say, hey, we're gonna have ALS patients in here, let's also take care of them. Right. Very cool forward thinking. All right, let's do us a favor, let's bring this stretcher out and take a look at this a little bit better. Sure. All right, so let's take this stretcher out and see what this stretch is all about. Dump, wow, that's pretty cool. So our ambulance actually has liquid air suspension so that when we open the back doors, the rear suspension of the truck actually lowers. So it's easier for us to remove the stretcher. It seems like you guys thought of pretty much everything. Yeah, we try. Go ahead, Connie. So as I explained, the legs are automated, they'll come down and this is a huge help for us, especially, not necessarily with patients that would be considered overweight, just any patient, because right. lifting up any person is a, yeah. is a strenuous activity. It, so. Well, you think, of, and I hate to use the term dead weight, but right. they're on a stretcher, they're not moving, they're not helping right. you, you pretty much gotta pick them up. So, how many guys do you normally run on a truck? You run two per truck, right? Yep, there's a minimum of two people, both EMTs, and um, usually that's plenty for us to operate the stretcher and move people, but in case we ever need any more help, we can always call for the fire department or okay. someone else to help okay. us. And this goes down power too, or? Yep. 
they'll go all the way down. We can lift the head up like that. We can lift the legs up. It's very maneuverable, it's very versatile. Right. The rear, um, these rear bars actually push in in case we're in a tight spot within somebody's residence and we can't get around a wall or a corner. This, these bars move in and out like that. One of the things I've noticed in my career is that the elevators in some of these older buildings right. hardly ever fit yeah. stretchers anymore. So, so that's when we'll use that the most is getting into elevators that this won't fit in. Right, right. Wow, awesome piece of machinery. Uh, you know, using hydraulics is gonna you know, extend your guys' service. Oh, yeah. Definitely. That pretty much concludes the vehicle tour here at Keystone Valley. And, uh, you know, if you guys are interested in, you know, checking it out, please come down, talk to these guys. Tommy's a great guy. He's got a lot of knowledge to give you more information, to, you know, maybe even volunteer. So thank you for watching. Once again, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification, and look forward for some more videos.